Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, we are going to be making cesium tetrachloroiodate from cesium chloride, iodine, and chlorine gas. Um, if you are a very long time or just very hardcore fan of this channel, you might be aware that back in 2019, right after I began the old channel, I actually did this prep. Um, but at the time, I was still new to playing around with all this inorganic stuff, and I was mistakenly calling it cesium dichloro. I had died throughout the whole fucking video. I mean, far too many times to go in and really fix it, and it's far too embarrassing to re-upload it, you know, what with me just being wrong throughout large parts of it. So I figured that I would repeat this prep. And besides, it's kind of an easy one to do. This would be another good one for amateur chemists out there. Um, you get a nice product that crystallizes beautifully, as I recall. Nice, beautiful needles. Um, it's always nice when it crystallizes beautifully. And it's not that difficult to make. Plus, it's a good, you know, good way to cut your teeth working with chlorine, I guess. I don't know. It's a pretty easy prep. What we have here is 8 grams of cesium chloride, nearly out of cesium chloride, and 1.35 grams of elemental iodine, and that really, I'm, I'm even more close to out of this shit, I'm going to have to figure out something about that. And we got about 82 mils of water right here. Now, what we are going to do, is we are going to add this shit into this beaker, you guys see this? Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Get your ass in there. What did I say? Get the fuck in there. All right. You have to swear at the chemicals. Yes, this is absolutely essential. Chemistry just doesn't work if you don't swear at them. Right. I'm going to use some of our water that we need to rinse some of this shit into there. There we go. There we go. And there we fucking a hey, God damn it. <sighs> there we go. All right, let's fix that problem. It doesn't have to be absolutely exact. I remember this from last time because I evaporated it down, which is how I got it to crystallize. Yeah, that's probably close to it. Okay, it's good enough. We're not writing any papers here. Okay, there we go. And we're just using our usual gas generator over here. Trichloroisocyanuric acid and hydrochloric acid. Because it's convenient and easy for our trailer park chemistry here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get this shit going. And we're going to hope the stir bar isn't going to continue to have mild schizophrenia there. And it says that this shit needs to be nearly boiling. So what we're going to do now, and it says to get it to nearly boiling before we begin to introduce the chlorine. At least that's the way it's written. Um, and we're going to hope that the iodine, and then we're supposed to introduce chlorine into this until the iodine dissolves. I don't know. We're just going to go with it. We're just going to go with exactly what the book says. So I will come back when this stuff is a little bit warmer and we are ready to start introducing the gas. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start the drip of the acid to begin to generate the gas. We will get some bubbling that will probably cause us to lose a little more iodine. I may add just a little bit more to it. Turn the heat down a little bit. Whoa. Okay, we don't want to blow the top off of it. As you can see, it doesn't take long for things to get going. This doesn't look like it is. All right. Refocus that piece of shit. Probably not. Oh, yeah. Something's definitely happening. Oh, 
I really should have given my stir bar antipsychotics. Okay, yellow. That is the color we are shooting for. Yay! All right, now we just got to keep doing this until the iodine dissolves. I doubt we'll have too much more sublimate out since it'll start reacting with the chlorine. <laughs> there is no suck back trap on this fucking thing, so I got to keep a close eye on it. That's okay, I'm just sitting out here working on the book today anyway. Now, I'll tell you what, writing a chapter on safety, I thought that was going to be very easy. But there's a lot of stuff that I'm thinking of needs to be said as I'm doing this thing. Now, the prep that I'm doing this from comes from the Handbook of Preparative Inorganic Chemistry. And it says, actually, this is the prep for cesium dichloroiodate and... It tells you not, even though we are setting it up to do it exactly like it says to, it says to be careful not to overchlorinate it because we'll end up with the tetrachloroiodate like we're going for here. Um, I don't know how you're not supposed to overchlorinate it. I mean, I guess if you had chlorine coming directly from a cylinder and you could really easily control its flow rate and everything, it might be easier to do. I don't know. There's another prep right under it for potassium dibromoiodate that literally requires mixing finely pulverized and dried potassium iodide with um, an equal weight of bromine, leaving it in a flask for three days and then just opening the top and letting the bromine evaporate out. It's supposed to give you shiny red crystals. I might actually do that. That'd be fun. All right, so all of the iodine has gone into solution now. I've turned the, t the heat down a little bit because for some reason the textbook admonishes us to keep this below boiling, so we're not going to push it. I don't know what will happen if we let it boil, but we're just not going to let it do that. I don't know, maybe it was because of the iodine sublimating. Maybe it was because the, that prep was written for a different protocol that was less stable. I'm not sure. Either way, we're not going to push our luck. Although I am going to transfer this into a different beaker before too long, a smaller one, and just continue to gently evaporate it down to try to get this stuff to crystallize. So I will come back when hopefully I have some crystals to show you. Okay, people. So it is the next day, and I have been working with this stuff... Um, all morning long. So when I left this stuff last night, its total volume was about 60 mils, left it out here, covered up, came out this morning, and there was a white solid that had precipitated out. I have no clue what the hell that actually was. It can't be cesium chloride because cesium chloride is way too soluble. I don't know what it was. So I filtered that stuff off and um, heated this stuff up some more, evaporated it down at a temperature below boiling. And um, when it got to be about 30 mils, I, I took it off the heat and I let it sit there. And all it did was super saturate. Nothing would crystallize out. Um, when I stirred it a little bit, of course, the product, you know, the, the product that we're after, crashed out of solution. And, um, but, but I mean, it just precipitated out instantaneously and we didn't get any pretty crystals. So, will you guys quit? So, I took that stuff and I heated it up again just enough to get all the solid to dissolve. And then took it off the heat again, and I've got it sitting here, and it looks like it is forming crystals as I've been talking. So it's finally starting to form crystals, but I'm still not getting the needles that I did the first time. This is very annoying, because they were very pretty. I am getting the right product. It is crystallizing out, as you can see. And I mean, you know, all is well. I'm just not getting the pretty bundles of needles that I got before, and that annoys me. So, anyway, 
I thought that I would show you guys what I mean by it super saturating here. It'll probably do it if I try to move it. Come on. Come on. Show the nice people. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There we go. See? super saturates like nothing else i mean it does it very easily but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to heat it up one more time get all this stuff to go into solution again and then we'll do a time lapse of it crystallizing and we will see if we can't get it to do something cool looking Oh, wow. Yes, this is just like before. Ha <laughs> ha! Success! Oh! Oh, that is fucking sweet. Yes. Yes, grow, my children. Yes. <laughs> Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so I think I've got the trick of it now. Now that I've done this twice. So you've got to evaporate it down till the volume is pretty damn low. You uh, Keep the heat low. Although I boiled it. Maybe that's what it took because this shit accidentally boiled. I stepped away for a minute. To um, stop the dogs from bothering somebody that was walking down the street. And it started boiling. And now, for the first time, we're getting decent crystals out. Hmm. Maybe you have to do that in order to get it to do this. I do not know. Oh, that's so cool. Huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and whatever that white shit was, that is definitely not it. That's not this. So if you get white shit like that when you've evaporated it down a little bit, I don't know. Let it cool off and sit and see if you get that shit precipitate out. Because if it drops out first, you might need to filter it off too. What it is, I do not know. Oh, that is so fucking sweet, man. Finally got it to do it. I've been sitting here fucking with this thing all damn day. Oh, that is so fucking cool.
Okay, everybody. So here is our final product with all of the liquid drained off of it. I'm just going to dry it like this rather than try to filter it because there's not a lot of it. And I think it's just going to be easier. Um, so, yeah, we'll just dry it like this and we'll just end the video here. So there you go. Preparation of a very cool, unusual compound that crystallizes beautifully. Nice. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Donate a few bucks if you are enjoying this content. Subscribe, comment, share the video. And until the next one, you guys, I see you later. That's pretty fucking neat.